Welcome to our sixth annual hurricane deployment orientation. Everything that you need to know about a hurricane deployment, especially if you're brand new. Starting now. Adjuster TV. Think big, start small, don't quit. This video is sponsored by Haig Education. Use code Adjuster TV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HaigEducation.com. All right, let's get into this. Hurricane Milton, not Hurricane Punisher or Hurricane Bruce Wayne or Hurricane, you know, something scary. It's, it's just mild mannered Milton is going to make a big mess. Um, this is the current map. Now let's just take a look at Milton here real quick. Basically what's going to happen is that this storm is going to hit somewhere on the middle of the west coast of Florida, probably late night, Wednesday into Thursday sometime. Um, I think it's going to pick up a little bit of speed. It may not be 185 mile an hour winds, hopefully, when it makes landfall, but it's still going to have a very significant storm surge in front of it and very high winds. It's just going to kind of run right up into Tampa Bay, um, which is not good for those folks. And I'm sure you guys have probably been watching the news. Does not bode well for, for Tampa. I mean, if we take a look at uh, Florida as a state, that storm is going to hit... It's going to have a major impact on everything pretty much from Fort Myers all the way up to like Cedar Key or even farther north. It's going to ro roll right over Orlando. So there's going to be tons and tons and tons of claims in Orlando. I've worked claims in Orlando back on Hurricane Jean <clears throat> back in, geez, what year was that? 04, I think. You're going to have claims. There's, there's condos and houses all up and down the coast of both coasts of Florida, but particularly on the east coast. They're going to get some storm, storm surge and wind from the hurricane, kind of the winds looping back around. It's going to be a gigantic mess um, and it's going to be a big storm and adjusters that are deployed to this storm who you know, can show that they can close claims. You could be there for a long time, okay? I'm talking months. Just be prepared that this will also be chaotic, right? So if you're trying to call IA firms and be like, hey, I'm taking Matt's fast track or I'm certified or whatever, and they have no idea what you're talking about, give them a little slack. They're probably, you probably got somebody in a cubicle that has, their, yesterday was their first day and they have no idea what they're doing um, or they just haven't been calibrated um, properly. When stuff like this goes down, Everybody and their mom is, is, it's all hands on deck at all the IA firms. The, the guy who's sweeping the floor at Pilot's office in Mobile is probably going to be running claims or running a help room or something, right, in Florida. That's how big this is. And couple this with the fact that Helene just went through and put a whole bunch of adjusters to work. They're short staffed. So if you want to go work this storm, you can go, okay? No matter what qualifications you have, I don't even know if they, they, I don't know if they're doing emergency licensing or, yet or not. Uh, maybe you guys know about that, but I think that there's you can pretty much find a way to go to this if you really, really, really want to. Okay, uh, Manny says, which agency would you consider to be more, more beginner friendly? Not, none of them. So it's it's going to be the companies that are going to be Manny. Good question. Um, let me read the whole question so that you know you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so they are doing emergency licensing. So which IA firm would be more beginner friendly for a first deployment, alacrity, pay setter, or pilot? Uh, since all seem desperate needing people, I want to pick the best one. They're all going to have a pretty, uh, I don't want to say well-oiled uh, hurricane deployment machine, but um, they're going to be, the main thing is, is that you're going to be working for, if, for all three of those companies, Except for Paysetter, maybe you're going to be doing State Farm stuff or, or Allstate, right? And so that's really what dictates the experience you have. It's not really the IA firm. So whoever calls, go, right? I wouldn't be picking and choosing. I would just pick, just, just go. Because listen, you know, I might sit here and say, oh, well, Pilot's the best. And then you go and you have a terrible experience with Pilot, right? Because, so, you know, you, you happen to run into a manager who was having a terrible day and they chewed your butt up, up one side and down the other you know, don't have time for you, whatever. You might, that might happen to you. You guys got to leave your egos at home. Um, people are going to be under a lot of stress. Um, everybody's going to be under a lot of stress, right? So it's kind of a big deal. 
So Hurricane Milton making landfall, making a mess. Um, hurricane season is not over yet. Okay, F don't forget that. This is this may or may not be the last storm of the season. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. This video is brought to you by Kaplik. You need insurance as an adjuster. Learn what you need for free at CPLIC slash adjuster TV. Go to where, so you, when you go to orientation for one of these, these uh, companies, they're probably gonna give you golf shirts. Let's say State Farm, State Farm Catastrophe Team or whatever, Allstate or whoever it is, right? Um, I would also get, and they're gonna be red or blue or white, right? Maybe. If you're lucky, you might find some black ones. Um, we'll go to Walmart and pick up a stack of at least seven for a week, maybe even 14. And they're pretty, I mean, they're 15 bucks a piece probably. And get those cheap, regular old golf shirts from Walmart. Get them in solid colors. Don't get stripes. Don't get anything else other than solid colors. Navy blue is my go-to. I like navy blue. It looks, I think I felt like it looked more professional and it looked less you know, like I'm wearing a bright red shirt. You, get, you, you know, if you're doing State Farm, they don't require you to wear a red shirt, but they have storm shirts that they want you to wear, right? Buy you buy. You're going to buy those other shirts as extras uh, for laundry day because you can't go and get 14 storm shirts during orientation. Okay, you can get like three. So they might even have jackets and things like that. Um, I don't know if I get one necessarily. I might get a windbreaker, right? Um, cause if the, you know, you happen to be in Florida in December, it's probably still going to be pretty nice. Right. So I don't know if you're necessarily going to need any, need anything other than just golf, storm shirts and then back up regular solid color golf shirts. Right. It's up to you. I'm telling you not to get stripes, khaki pants, cargo pants, you know, like Carhartt work pants, totally fine. Um, you know, Dickies, whatever, right? And then you need to be wearing some kind of a, you wanna get like a brown or black, like trail running shoe or a hiking shoe, something with a good grip on the bottom of it. Um, and then some cougar paws and a hat. And then, then you're good to go. No jeans, do not wear jeans on, on any deployment with any company ever. Golf shirt, like a polo, right? Short sleeve, you know, polo, like a, like a golf shirt, shirt you wear playing golf. Um, if you if you've got a solid color fishing shirt and it's long sleeve, you want to wear a long sleeve like a button down shirt, solid color, um, right? That is comfortable, keeps you cool, keeps your arms from getting sunburned, right? Totally fine. Do that as well. If you want to wear a wide rim hat, I think that's okay. Just don't make it ridiculous, right? Um, maybe just like a little like um, you know fishing hat or like a you know like a backpacking hat or whatever that's looks nice right you want to be look you want to look professional you don't want to have it be all crumpled up and like don't wear military hats you know or like don't wear anything that's not like that you wouldn't wear into an office okay good questions all right so next thing we got basically if you guys if you decide that you want to go on this storm um just kind of even coming into this you know fresh if you're like well i really don't have any construction experience well you've got construction training so you can watch that whole ilx thing you know and you'll know a lot more. You probably know more. I haven't, I haven't gone through that. You probably know more about construction than I do by the end of that thing, right? Um, Xactimate level one, just if you go through the Xactimate level one um, inside of Fast Track, um, that's more than enough to get you the kind of the knowledge that you need to be able to close claims, no problem, right? Uh, before they hand you claims, you watch that module two which is intake, and it tells you what to do with those claims when they hand them to you. Um, and then the rest of it helps you close the, your files, right? And it's, it's, it can supplement you. It can kind of be like a real little virtual, you know, guy sitting on your shoulder. You know, anytime you have a question, you jump in there. If you can't find it in there, you know, jump into the, the group, shoot me an email, ask me questions. Um, I'm here for you if you want to do it. It's a big storm, right? And maybe not once in a decade, but it's definitely top three, you know, once in a decade kind of storm. Um, so you should be able to do it. it. Like Manny said, or somebody said, they're handing out emergency licenses in Florida. You don't go get that. You just show up and they say, here's your emergency license, right? When you get to the eye firm, we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Cause they're, they're going to take a blanket. Um, they're going to do a blanket thing, right? Um, if you show up, you got your laptop, your ladder, your cougar paws, your tape measure, you know, your little snapshot camera, and some golf shirts and some khaki pants and some hiking shoes, you're good to go. 
okay? Um, but if you want to sit it out, there's no shame in that either. I wouldn't be, you know, if you, if you really don't think that you, you know, comfortable doing this with this short of notice, um, then uh, don't, I wouldn't, then don't do it. You're not gonna, nobody's gonna be mad at you if, you if you don't do it. There'll be more storms, right? This isn't the last storm that's ever gonna happen ever. Um, there's stuff that happens over the winter that you can get ready for. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not the end of it, right? It's a, it's a good, my long story short on this is that this right now is one of those opportunities that um, makes an adjuster. It's like, so a few years from now, if you're still into this business, you go to a conference or you talk to somebody, right? They may say, oh yeah, you know, I got started back in 2024, right? You'll talk to adjusters, you'll, you'll meet adjusters down there at orientation who got their, who have been in the adjuster since 2017, right? Well, what happened in 2017? We had Irma and Harvey. Lots and lots of adjusters that are working right now got their start, hur hurricanes, Harvey and Irma, right? 2017. So that's pretty common for that to happen. It's a big opportunity, right? It's tough to, to miss it. It's tough to like sit it out because it's, you know, the, the, the bar for getting on a storm is pretty much, there is pretty much isn't, isn't one. They're taking people off the street, right? So you can get in there and distinguish yourself, close your claims, maybe get some more claims. Maybe you find yourself, you know, like trying to figure out what you're going to do for Thanksgiving, right? You're still in Florida and you're like, well, I mean, am I going to fly home or am I going to leave this storm? Am I going to stay? They want me to stick around for cleanup, right? This could be this could be at your start, right? This kind of a storm if, if you haven't done this before. Um, so, but again, you don't have to say yes, but it's a it's a it's hard to say no to something like this because this is such a good opportunity. Okay, um, Perry's been super busy with dailies, debating. Right, everybody else is going to head south, Perry. Um, so you might end up getting a, a much higher workload if you stay home. Um, Indra says, can we expect remote work as well? Yes. Uh, Alacrity told me that they're hiring inside and outside adjusters, which means outside adjusters, the person that's out in the field inside is the, rem the remote desk person. They may be sending people. Nobody said to me, um, but there may be a chance that they're saying, well, hey, we need you to go to Richardson, Texas and go sit in a cubicle and work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, that may be a thing too. And if they offer you that, take it. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be it's it's good money and it's probably easier than the field side um, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities just get out there just say yes right if you can't do field if you're like there's no i can't do it because i got you know one leg or you know whatever reason right and you want to do remote just let them know you do not have to apply to the emergency license for florida indra they will give them to you you can't the emergency licenses in most states and most circumstances are not available for the general public. They're only given to IA firms and carriers who then hand them out to you when you're deployed with them. Okay. So don't worry about the licenses. If you're good to go on a license. Just show up. Right. Um, 15 footer. I don't know. Depends. Um, there may be houses on stilts that you got to get on the roof of. Um, so, and that's a lot higher than 15 feet to clean it. Doing cleanup is, is going to be a really, really good money, even though it's not as good a money as, as new claims. Um, so whatever they ask you to do, I'm going to, I'm going to try to stay as long as I can, because that's going to really solidify, um, your relationship with that company. And they may, they may bump you onto some other storm someplace. else. they may send you to New Mexico after that in January for something you just never know. Right. So the more you can kind of give and lead with value and show up and help the more they're going to be like, hey, we really need Indra to go do this. We really need Manny to go. You know, he did such a great job on uh, Milton. Um, we can keep him there for as long as, as he wants. Um, or we have this thing that happens up in Seattle or we got a thing in St. Louis, right? This is how it starts, okay? The longer you stay, the better. So you want to try to stay as long as you can, okay? Um, so standby. If you get put on standby, you can be on standby with multiple companies. Um, I think right now there may be skipping standby. So I've, I'm seeing like, if you, if you go through like the, the links that I'm starting to get for these little like survey, like form questionnaire things where they're like, you know, for a Milton, like for pilots got one, right. For the Milton deployment start here. Right. And you start, you fill up this form and then it kicks you out a thing and says, Hey, you need, you know, you need to be, can you be in Florida by October the 9th or the 13th or whatever it is that they say. Right. Or can you be in Mobile or can you be in Atlanta? 
um, to, st to sort of post up and go to orientations and stuff. You say yes, then you're deployed, right? So you can't do that with Alacrity and Paysetter and everybody else and say yes to all those because now you're deployed with all of them and that's, that won't work. Don't even try to do that. So it sounds like they're, they're just kind of skipping the standby thing. Um, if you do get put on standby uh, with multiple companies where they say, hey, are you interested in going? Um, can we put you on standby? If you get the standby notification, then it's okay to have multiple standbys. But if they say deployment notification, then you're locked into whoever that is. Okay. And uh, 32 foot ladder is what I carried. I had a 24, the two extension ladders, a 32 footer and a 24 footer. Um, I had them on top of my forerunner and I was able to get on 99.9% .9 of roofs. And the only ones I couldn't get on were three story. Uh, apartment buildings and usually as a contractor or a lot of times they had a hatch on the roof that you could get you could access the roof that way all right um the other thing i wanted to mention about this or talk about was they may get a lot of this staffed over the next couple of days where if you're like well i'm not quite ready yet and then you're, i haven't decided yet i'm talking to my wife or i'm talking to my husband or talking to my this person or whatever and then friday right today's tuesday friday you call you start calling these firms and like, yeah, we're good, right? We got this one staffed. That may that may happen, but usually what happens is is that then they will do, uh, they may put you on standby for the second wave or the third wave, right? Because what happens is, and this is why this is this, and I don't, I can't remember if I talked about this in the the webinar the other night, but this training that you're in right now, the fast track was specifically designed for this specific situation. Okay, so this is tailor-made for hurricane deployments, you know, primarily for the field side, but you, the, all the desk remote stuff you learn in here as well. Um, so what happens is, is that say you get deployed in the first wave and you don't know what you're doing, right? But you're gonna feel like you don't know what you're doing, but you don't have any training, right? So say you're, you're not in this class and you're just like, you know, saw something pop up on Facebook, a friend of a friend of a friend, and you said, you know what, I'm gonna go. And so you call Pilot and they send you, and they hand you 70 claims or they hand you 30 claims, and you're not really sure exactly what to do with them other than they said to, just to call everybody, right? So you call everybody, and you didn't set any appointments or you set a couple of appointments, and you maybe you go and just like, you start pulling you know, files out of the, just at random and just go look at them without calling the homeowner or about letting them know that you're coming. You just kind of screw things up, right? You're gonna spin out pretty quick and they're gonna kick you off the storm. All those claims need to go to somebody. So they will reassign those to everybody that's left. But if a bunch of adjusters do that, if a bunch of adjusters spin out, which they will, you guys are gonna see this, it's tragic, um, but it happens. It happens in every single hurricane I've ever been on. Um, those people start spinning out, all those claims still have to be handled. Those people aren't going to get paid for them unless they actually closed one, any of them, right? So then that's when wave two comes in, or wave three, wave six, right? Every few days, every week or so, um, as people spin out and the volume, there, a, another neighborhood may open up where the National Guard had it blocked off because it was an island or something, and then everybody goes in and freaks out and, and uh, files claims all at the same time, and then they get a big big chunks of claims, right? Then another wave gets sent out. So if you missed the first one, I would say not to worry too much if you really, really still wanna go. If you're like, well, I can't go this week, but I can definitely go next week and be gone forever or for however long. Um, they're probably are gonna be, it's probably gonna be another wave. I can't imagine a storm this big um, combined with Helene and possibly whatever else is gonna happen this, you know, through the rest of this month. Um, I can't imagine it being them not doing more than one wave. It just doesn't, it wouldn't make any sense to me, especially considering all the warm bodies that they're throwing at this. Okay, so waves. It's important to remember that. A lot of adjusters are going to come and go. And as long as you, the claims that you have, you're closing those claims, you're following the plan, um, you're going to be okay. And you're not going to spin out and get your files all taken away from you and then sent home. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about with regard to scheduling is, how do I tell the other ones that no, I don't want to, that you don't want to go? Depends on what you said yes to. Did you say yes to them? Did they say, hey, go to Atlanta? Or did they just say, hey, do you want to be on standby? If you said yes to standby, then you went with, and you're going to go with pilot, don't worry about it. If you said, if to, Alacrity called you and you said, or they, you know, you filled out their thing, 
and it said, okay, well, you know, your next step is to be at this address, but, but no later than 24 to 48 hours from now, then you've said yes to deploying with them, you need to call them back and say no and say that you're, because they're going to be counting on you, okay? You can't be deployed with more than one company. It's just super important. Don't even try. It might sound like a good idea. You're like, oh, I can get even more claims. One deployment with one company is a full-time job for four people, okay? And it's just going to be you doing it, right? You're going to be working 100 hours a week, legit 100 hours a week for one company. If you try to do more than one, to your, that's, that's an automatic fail. Besides, never mind the fact that they might not send you to the same place, right? So don't, don't even try that. Not saying that you're going to do that, man. I'm just saying just in general. Some people get the idea, they're like, well, if one is good, then I can work for a bunch. And, you know, I could have my brother-in-law, my, my neighbors and my guys, you know, and my, they could all come and help me out and write estimates for me. Da, 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 da. Don't, don't even try it. It's just, no, it's a no. Okay, so for scheduling, um, I'm just going to kind of run through the, um, kind of the basics of the, um, kind of the, that calendar that's in inside the course was developed um, when I was on Hurricane Katrina and sort of refined on subsequent hurricanes and when I was training adjusters on Sandy. Um, it's the one a day for three days and a paper day, right? Um, a little bit of a twist that you may encounter with this, which is great. This is awesome. Um, and this is a good twist, right? And that is that especially with a company like Allstate, but I think most of them probably will try to have you do this. Um, and that is what something called ECA, ECH claims or express claims handling claims where they say, okay, if you are looking at the loss report and, or you call the homeowner and it sounds like that claim might be, um, if you wrote it up, it might be $5,000 or less, then close it over the phone, right? And I've seen in the past, it depends on what they want to do with you. But in the past, they've been like, and you, you'll bill for the full inspection. You know, obviously you can't charge deep and high if you didn't get on the roof, but you charge for as though you went to the house and you, and you wrote it up, right? So it's not a phone closure. It's an actual, you know, on-site, like you went to the house and you're closing it that way. And that's how you would bill for it. ECH claims are a great way to kind of front load your, your production and really have a, gr a good impact on your cycle time when you're getting started. And basically what it is, is like if you got like a tree on fence claim, right? You're looking at the loss report and you're like tree on fence. I'm going to, I'm going to triage that claim and claims like it and it's pile all their own. I'm, I may still try to put them into a schedule just in case the homeowner's like tree on fence. No, 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 no. We got this tree on the fence. The tree is on the detached garage. That thing smashed all the way into the ground. Everything is, you know, there's, oh gosh, there's got to be a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools in there. You know, right? and the half the house is gone and the other half is burned. And that right? and so that's, a, that's not an express claims handling claim, right? That's not a phone closure claim. Pick the ones that um, look like from the loss report that they're going to be, you know, small. Whatever number that they tell you. On Sandy, they were like, they started with $2,500. If it's $2,500 or less, then just write it up and settle over the phone and be done with it, right? And, and turn it in. Um, and then they bumped it up to $5,000 and then they bumped it up to $7,500 because they, got, they were getting so far behind, okay? This is a golden opportunity for you to make money right out of the gate, right? And to uh, to have a, a good, good impact on your cycle time. I'm going to prioritize... ECH claims, right? So, and this is something that you'll learn in orientation. You know, they're going to say, um, oh, and by the way, you know, if you, if you got claims, you know, here's our ECH thing. And they go to that slide and the claims $5,000 or under, you know, close it over the phone and get it off your desk, right? I'm front loading those. So looking at the loss report, the, the loss notes, um, then I'm going to probably take the first. Uh, so basically the calendar is going to be like, um, Hey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So you're going to be at like orientation, right? Maybe orientation day two, and maybe you get your claims assigned to you. You're going to spend day three calling everybody, right? And put in statusing the files in Xactimate or whatever you're using, right? Whatever they tell you to do, maybe ECA, ECS or, you know, next gen or whatever. And then if you have the option to do express like phone closures, I'm probably going to take these two days 
and do those, right? ECH claims. And then my first field inspection will be here. And then that's when I'm going to start doing one a day, right? The sixth and the seventh. And then the next, you know, down here, we got one. Right? And then we have a paper day. And then depending on how, I mean, this also gives you a chance to kind of run through the claims process, right? And it may be that you have a bunch of these that's going to take you more than two days to do, but I'm going to take two full days. I'm going to get up at four o'clock in the morning here and I'm going to start writing these up, right? Um, and try to get those off my plate. That'll get me through the whole claims process short of taking photos, right? And then that'll set me up a little bit better to be able to close one a day for the first three days, right? Just like in the, the training, take a paper day as a backup. Maybe there's some more ECH claims that you can do, right? And then depending on how comfortable I am with this, if I'm like, man, here, I was able to do uh, half the roof gone, gutters blown down, half the siding's gone, tree on fence, uh, shed gone, destroyed. Um, and I was scoped it. I got there at nine o'clock in the morning. I scoped it, went back to the help room. I went back to the hotel. I went back wherever and wrote it up. And I was done by three o'clock in the afternoon, right? Well, maybe, or I was done by noon, right? Something like that. Um, if that's the case, then maybe we, instead of doing two a day here, maybe we do three a day, right? And be careful. This is, when I say this, when I say your, your speed limit is, the, uh, the number of claims that you look at every day is how many you can reasonably, being the key word, right? How many you can reasonably close in one day. If you're like, well, I could do this, but I'd be up till one o'clock in the morning, then maybe we're not quite ready to do three a day, right? Maybe we'll just stick with the two a day here, right? Um, also, the question I get on this often is, hey, when I make my contacts, what if I find that I'm faster than what you say to do in the calendar? Well, I'm going to still, I'm going to, when I make my contacts, I'm going to set up my calendar just like it is in the training. Okay. And then if I'm like, well, geez, all the ones that I got, the neighborhoods that they put me in, it's just four shingles off the roof, tree on fence, right? That's it. Water spot on the ceiling. And I'm, I can, I can do three or four of those in a day, right? After the, after the end of the first week, I can do four of those a day, right? Then just Re rebuild your schedule, call back the people that you had scheduled out here and say, hey, listen, something happened, you know, good news. I can move you up, right? I can look at you at four o'clock on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, instead of nine o'clock, you know, two, two weeks from then, right? So you can redo your schedule as needed. Your key, reasonably, you always want to be closing whatever you look at. If you're new to the class, you're new to this, only look at what you can reasonably close that same day, period. Okay. If you do that, you will, you, you, it's impossible to fall behind. Okay. And if you can do that, you know, you can have, maybe you had, we'll say six ECH claims here. This one's ruined too. You had six ECH claims and you got those closed by the end of this day. Those are going on your next paycheck. Okay. That's important. Um, then you do three, right? That's nine. And then you do, you know, we'll say you did two, right? So nine plus six, that's 15 by the end of this, this week, right? 15, maybe, maybe 20, right? Times who knows what they're going to be, the holidays are going to bill. Um, no idea, right? But so we'll just say 350, you know, somebody got a calculator, do that. What is that? That's four or 5,000 bucks, something like that, right? It's a good start, right? And if you're consistently after that, if you're doing, you know, we'll say three a day for the next week, plus a few of these, you know, ECH claims that they you get assigned to you just out of nowhere, they just pop up in your inbox, got another claim, you call it, they're like, oh yeah, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal, you know, um, we just had the, the, the wind blew away our garden shed and it didn't have anything in it, you know, we were, you know, that's it. Right. That's a six hundred dollar or thousand dollar claim. Maybe, you know, it's under, under their deductible. That's an ECH claim. Um, you know, then you you could probably close another 10 to 15 to 20 in one week. Right. 
times 350. So this is how this kind of stacks. You don't want to get too far out in front of it, right? Or too far to where you're like, too far behind where you're being a little bit, you're being too optimistic about what you can reasonably close. We just want to keep this in mind right here. The other reason why we do this is because I'm going to tell you something about hurricanes. Um, Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina was the worst that I've ever seen. But when you show up there, you're going to be driving on the interstate, right? And you're going to see, especially if you're from the South or you've been to the South, you know this, there's pine trees everywhere, really tall pine trees. And when a hurricane blows through, the pine trees will all snap off at the same height, all same direction for hundreds of miles, right? Army Corps of Engineer com Engineers come through and they, they open, they bulldoze the roads and get all the trees off the road so that people can drive on them, right? And they do the same thing. We pull into little towns and you think you're going to get gas. You're not going to find gas. The closer you get to where the damage is, to where the storm really hit hard, the less you're going to find anything, right? So you're going to see, you know, the Home Depot, right, with the front caved in and you can see all the way out the back. You see sun daylight as you're driving down the road and you're like, Pull up at a stop. It's, it's a four-way stop with, you know, they, they're holding up stop signs and all the lights are out, right? And you're looking right through the back of the Home Depot, right? And the, and the trucks are pulling in with the, the humanitarian people and the FEMAs and everybody, right? Pulling into that parking lot. And there's boats stacked up everywhere. And just like, it's it looks like the post-apocalypse, which you would imagine the post-apocalypse to be like, it's what it looks like. And, it's, and it feels wrong. It's, a, it's the strangest thing I've ever experienced when I was on Hurricane Katrina, um, driving around. In, in, and I, I didn't even go into into New Orleans. All my claims were in Mississippi. Um, you pull in there and all the windows are blown out of everything. You know, if they didn't have, if they weren't boarded up, which, you know, a lot of them are. But there's also like just dirt. And especially if things were underwater, there's dirt and pieces of insulation and debris and plastic and leaves and thing on everything, right? And it just feels, it'd be like if you um, lived in Florida and in the middle of July, it was, it got to be four degrees below zero, right? And it snowed, right? Just right in the middle, it'd be the bizarre, it wouldn't feel right, you'd feel, it would just feel wrong, right? I don't know, really, that's about as best as I can explain it, but that's, that's what a hurricane's gonna be like. So you're gonna be dealing with that. And then the people that are, that whose homes are in there, everything that they're, they've, they're used to seeing is now destroyed, snapped off, you know, washed away, blown away, whatever it is. And some people are going to be kind of, uh, you know, sort of like just numb to it, right? You can kind of tell they're just kind of like the eyes are glazed over and they're like, well, I mean, I guess this is just what it is, you know? And and then other people are going to be losing their minds on you. And, you know, it's it's you have to... Leave the ego at home, right? You can't be taking anything personally on this. Somebody starts yelling at you. Um, don't react to whatever they're 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 reacting to or whatever they're saying or the volume or, or whatever. I mean, if they're getting into your personal space and you feel threatened, jump in your truck and drive away, right? Just don't even. You don't have to say anything. Don't be like, well, sir, I'm I'm. You know, we're gonna have to end this. Just. Back up, get in your vehicle and drive away, right? You don't have to deal with that. But for normal people who are just like venting, which you might get like, well, insurance company's gonna screw me and da 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 Deep breath, you know, don't don't focus in on what you're, what they're outwardly saying, but what they're kind of, what you're hearing them sort of, the subtext of what they're saying is, is that they're, they're scared. They don't know what to expect. They're afraid that they're gonna, they're not gonna get anything for their, their, their damaged property. And in certain circumstances, they may not, right? Which may make them yell some more. And you just have to be like, listen, I'm sorry. You know, that's the best I can do. Um, I, I really want to pay for your claim, but the, I'm, I'm limited because of this and this and this, right? If you're if you're in a position where you are, you know, able to make a coverage decision, which you're not all going to, you're not all of you are going to do it. If you're going to State Farm, you probably are. Um, so you just have to, um, Give everybody some grace, right? Make, make sure that you give yourself some space, like mentally and even physically between somebody that's like, they're venting and they're, they really, really want to tell you how mad they are and how, how much they, you know, all the things, right? They're, they're going to say whatever. They may even like, it might get personal. You just have to give them, give yourself some space in here to not react to what they say and not like get yourself 
worked up by taking things personally. You know, if they call, you know, you say your mom wears combat boots and, and you do that's just, I mean, you know, it's like Marty McFly being called chicken, right? You just can't not respond to that. Um, you have to say, this person's, they're afraid. Um, what can I do? What can I say to um, let them know that I'm here to help? I'm here to try and help. If I can, I can. If I can, I can't, right? Then that's really all you need to do, uh, do about it. Um, so the scheduling thing is, has a number of benefits, you know, this, this sort of setup that I have for you guys. Um, obviously, it gives you the opportunity to, to close claims and to see the whole process of closing a claim start to finish, which you might have gotten some of that with this. You might, I would stay at the office if you can, if they have an office like or a help room or whatever, and do these in an office, right? Don't just, don't go to your hotel room and try to sit there and figure out how to do this. If they have help, take these ECH claims and have the help room people help you close them, okay? Because once you see the process start to finish, right? then the next one's easier and it's a, it's a little bit faster. And the next one after that's even easier and it's a, even a little bit faster than that, right? So it builds confidence because you got claims closed and you know you might get some kicked back for corrections. That's what we're paper days are for, right? And also for four o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock in the morning is doing corrections and that sort of thing, right? Um, but it also builds your confidence, builds momentum, right? And if you're closing claims right out of the gate, closing files, even if they get kicked back for corrections, which they're gonna, there's no way that they're not going to. Even if you have help with them, there's something, somebody that's gonna miss something, right? Um, wrong price list or wrong header or whatever it is, or they change something the next day and all the file review people are told to do it a different way. Now, that's gonna happen, right? Take that with grace, do the corrections, send it back up, do all the corrections they ask for, all of them. Don't just, if they send seven things, don't just pick the first one and fix that and then send the file back up, do all seven. If you don't do, if, you, if you're the person, and I, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because as, having done file review and in this class, some students, um, when they go to certify, they don't do all the corrections that are requested of them. If you, if you do that, you're gonna get in trouble, okay? You're gonna get a, you're gonna get a bad reputation. Um, if you drag your feet, if it takes you a long time to do your corrections. If you email the file reviewers or your manager and complain about file review because the file you don't think is reasonable or whatever, you're going to get in trouble. Okay, just do what they ask you to do, and turn the file back in and let it go in. Right, you're going to get paid. The homeowner will get paid. Right, we don't want to hold up the homeowner getting paid. And um, if if the file needs to reopen later for something because it was file review was wrong on it then let it open up later. So just don't worry about it right now. Your job is to close claims, okay? It's ABCs, always be closing. Is that from a movie? Your job is to close claims, okay? Um, super important. This gets you paid, gets the homeowner paid. It um, gets you on your manager's radar, right? Because if they're gonna, every single day, they're gonna be looking at the metrics of everybody that's on their team, okay? Your IA firm team manager. And if they see that you're, they know that you're new, right? And most probably 15 out of 20 adjusters on their team are going to be brand spanking new, right? If they have five adjusters that have a few years of experience that are like just reliably closing three or four a day, and they're just like, you know, turning on them in, and then you're starting to pop up to the top of their newbie list, the, the newbies on their team, um, you're going to get their attention, right? And they're going to want to... So they're going to keep track of what, what, your, what your pending is. And when your pending gets below a certain point, they may call you and say, hey, you know, it looks like you've got, you know, five pending or 10 pending or eight or whatever. Um, do you want some more, right? Or do you want to, you know, we actually need to move some people over to, you know, to Daytona. Do you want to go, right, for some commercial or for some condos or whatever it is, right? Um, it's up to you. But if I, I would say, hey, whatever you need me to do, I'm, I'm here to I'm here for as long as you guys need me, whatever you need, right? So if you want to send me over to Daytona, just tell me where to go. I'll, I'll wrap up what I got here and then drive over there, right? Um, so that's how you stay on the storm for a long time is to not get overextended. Don't get overscoped, right? Don't try to go out and scope six a day and then think you're going to stay up and write them or scope all your claims the first eight days and then, oh, well, I'll just, you know, then I'll just take a week and just hang out in my hotel room and write them up, right? You'll get kicked off the storm if you do that. Don't do that. Okay, please don't do that. If I hear of you doing that, you're out of the circle of trust. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Okay, yeah. Script for ECH. So basically, 
the long and short of it is, is that you're, um, you're, when you sit down to do your claims recon, right, you print out all your, your loss reports, right, no matter what, and I'm going to get them all organized as to where they are, right, um, according to exact analysis, I'm going to look at my, not necessarily like doing claims recon to like see how big the house is or see how much fence they have or all that kind of stuff, or if it's they're on stilts, right, which may be a consideration. Um, I'm just going to kind of get them grouped to loosely together as to how close they are to each other, right? And, and set them out at, like if I was going to look at all my claims and, and or just drive to every single one of the houses in like one shot, right, I'm going to order them in a stack like that. So I could take the first one. I'm going to go to this one. It's the closest to my hotel. And then the next one is closest one to that one. And the next one's closest one to that one, so on and so forth. And just kind of organize them that way. Is that how I would do it? And then I'd go back through and keep them in that order if you can. And I'm going to look at the loss notes because usually when they do the FNOL, the first notice of loss, when the insured calls in the, the claim, um, it'll have uh, the, the, the loss, per, the FNOL person should say, and can you just kind of describe the extent of the damage, right? And they'll say, oh, well, it's just a tree on a fence, right? Or half the house is gone. The roof's gone and the whole inside's gone, right? So they, they might say that. It may be um, that they, it says nothing on it, right? It may be that a lot of the claims that get um, uh, filed, especially on a storm like this, the State Farm and Allstate and wh whoever else has got claims in those, or policies in that area may just file a claim for everybody automatically. So there's not going to be any notes at all. They might just say Hurricane Milton, right? So then you got to call and say, you know, hey, you know, I'm Matt with Allstate. Just want to call and let you know I'm the adjuster. Um, assigned to your uh, hurricane claim, first of all. Um, everybody's okay. You know, you guys, do you guys have a place? To, are you out of your house? You know, questions like that. This is, that's where this kind of thing is important. Um, and then, you know, then we want to kind of get down to brass tacks with it. Um, you've established that, you know, they're all right. And, you, you, you know, with a little bit of empathy here goes a long way, certainly. Um, then you're establishing if the house is habitable, right? Because if it's, if they're not in the house, well, it may be because they got evacuated and the house is fine, right? Or it could be that the house is gone and they're obviously evacuated. Um, so you want to, you want to find out if they know that or not, right? They may or may not know, um, which makes it, this is where this gets challenging. No matter what they say, you know, after you have, you've, you've built your schedule after you, you know, you line everybody up and if you were going to go look at them all in the one line, then you're going to do your claims recon on those, um, set them aside in days, right? I'm doing one a day for these days and I'm doing these first three, right? One here, one here, and one here, right? One, two, three, and then I'm doing two, right? So these two are the next and these two are the next. And I'm going to lay it out all in, all in your bed in the order, like seven stacks, right? And then with a paper day on Tuesday or it's day two or whatever, right? Um, write on the piece of paper, paper day, and set it there. So no, no inspections are going there, right? Unless you get have to reschedule somebody or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to lay my whole schedule out like that. And then I'm going to restack it all and just so that it's in a coherent order so that I can relay it back out if I needed to, or I can stick it in my 13 pocket file folder, right? So this day goes here, this day goes here, you know, so they're all in order, right? Then I'm calling everybody, no matter what, you know, whether they've been to the house, they don't know, nine o'clock on Tuesday, that's your time, right? Um, depending on where they are, um, they may be all total losses, right? In which case you're not going to be trying to do three of those a day unless they give you, unless they let you do um, valuations, right? Which would be awesome if they let you do that because that's like a 30 minute interview with the homeowner where you basically just go through um, the valuation tool and Xactimate, which there's a video on that in Adjuster TV Plus. Um, and you ask them a bunch of questions and then it just kicks out a number and then there you go. That's And that's it, right? But if you are kind of on the fringes of the storm, there's a lot of damage on the fringes of these storms um, where it's going to be shingles blown off, water spot on the ceiling, tree limb on the house, tree limb on the fence, whatever. Those they are going to be smaller claims. And you're going to have a pretty good idea of what you're going to get, right? So if they say, all right, well, listen, you're you're in Tampa Bay, right on the, all your houses are right in this zip code. And you look at the map and it's it's coastline, right? It's like right on the, in the, on the inlet. And that's where all your houses are. 
probably going to be total losses, right? So I'm going to be I'm going to build my schedule based on that expectation. I'm not going to try to do three a day or five a day unless I can do um, valuations. In which case, I'm going to try to I'm definitely going to try to do a lot more. Um, but they will tell you to a certain degree. Um, they will take their very experienced adjusters and put them on the the big the biggest losses. Um, number one, because they're more experienced um, and they can handle them. And number two, maybe as a reward for them, you know, saying, hey, you know, you you were on that that crappy storm that we had up in Fargo. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting you on total losses down here. They're all valuations and go get them. Right. Which may happen. A lot of adjusters that are experienced a storm like this is going to be like a walk in the park. It's the easiest. The hardest thing about it will be driving over a nail and having to change their tire. Right. They're going to have the rest of this going to be pretty easy. And you'll get there. Right. Eventually. Um, but for everybody else, you know, you can't really pick and choose where they, where they're going to send you. They will just, the claims get assigned. They're going to try to keep you in one or two zip codes and everything that, that, uh, up to, you know, the limit that they're going to give you 20 or 40 or 60 or whatever it is, that's what you get in that area, no matter what they are. Right. And they could be anything, right. They're going to be hurricane claims, obviously, but they could be two tabs blown off or the house is gone. Right. Um, if you're on the fringes, like I was saying, it's probably going to be a lot of lighter damage. So you're not going to have people are still going to have stayed in their houses in, in those areas. So they like, yeah, yeah, no, we're fine. We just had a leak over here. And then, you know, just get out of here whenever you can. We know other people have, a, you know, have much more worse damage than we do. If you end up in that neighborhood, that's great, for especially for a beginner adjuster. Um, and chances that, that you get into a neighborhood like that are, I think, fairly high um, as a new person. Um, so... Be glad if they say, well, you're going to be in, uh, you know, north of Orlando and and uh, or whatever. And it's, you know, you're, you're looking at all the loss reports and they're light damage. Right. I'm going to be really excited about that if I'm if I'm you. What's the key word? Two key words. Reasonably and be closing. Close claims. Do you have an iPad, Manny? No iPad. Um, that's fine. If you have a lot of a lot of. Um, some of the houses that you're going to encounter will have had their roofs blown off. They may not have had any storm surge. Um, and the inside of the house is gutted. It's just stud walls all the way through. Um, if that's the case, if you, you know, you can use a tape measure. You can use an iPad with, a, you know, Xactimate mobile on it. Um, the only thing that a disto gets you that talks to Xactimate is that if you have Xactimate open, or an iPad with Xactimate open with Bluetooth that you beep the measurement and it pops up on here. Personally, because if you get an iPad that has a LiDAR on it, um, it you don't need the disto. You just point it at the wall and tap on the screen and do this. I mean, we have Xactimate mobile training in plus um, that you can watch. Um, if you find that you're not in a fringe area, right? If you're not in the area where it's light damage, um, you may be in a moderate damage area or a high damage area. I'm probably going to tell you to invest in an iPad um, and and get Xactimate and install Xactimate Mobile on it and, and learn how to use it because it's going to save you a lot of time. Right? You're going to get the diagram and the measurements at the same time. Right? When you get to do this number, it's getting the measurements and the diagram at the same time. You can get the windows and doors. You can get cabinets. You can get all that stuff. Right. Um, so highly recommend it. The disto thing is if you take your laptop into the house and you have it open and you have a sketch open and you have to set sketch up just right and just click on the wall and then click on, you know, do your measurement with the laser. And then it talks to, you have to be paired. I, I think it's extra steps. That is a waste of time. Um, you can probably draw a square and use your, do you, get a laser for sure and beep your measurements out. And write them down with a piece of paper and, and then transcribe that into sketch probably faster than you can filling around with a disto with Bluetooth. Personally, having messed with it, it's uh, I think it's a, a bit of a pain in the butt. And I don't I don't find it to be um, an efficiency enhancer. Xactimate mobile absolutely is a much more efficient tool than any, all of the above. Um, but short of that, um, the laser, right? Even if you have you don't have an Xactimate mobile or a, a, an iPad that you can use. You can still use your phone, right? Um, 
any pro like iPhone Pro from like iPhone 12 to now uh, has LiDAR on it and you can download and install Xactimate Mobile on that and use it exactly like you do with the uh, iPad. Same deal, right? You pull it down out of the cloud, the file out of the cloud, you do the rooms, you take the pictures, you take the pictures and put it right into the estimate here with this. You can write the estimate on your phone using a macro, drop a macro on the room and then tweak it how you want it and then send it back up to the cloud and jump into the computer and um, write your, your reports, do your invoice, do your, you know, whatever else you got to do, organize your photos and stuff, close the file and send it up, right? Pretty straightforward. Well, Tim's two minutes late as usual, even though it's it was an hour ago when we started. So it's got to be an Apple device, Manny. Um, they still haven't got it. Even if uh, like an Android device has LiDAR, it's still not working on Android. You can use Xactimate Mobile on Android. It just can't, it's just don't, ha they don't have the, the LiDAR. The, the, the sketch AR functionality. Go to Home Depot and get a Bosch laser. I mean, they're, I don't, they're like 50 bucks or whatever, or hundred bucks. Um, you know, I have a Hilti. People get the Leica ones. As long as it's accurate and it's small, like a little small thing that you can stick in your bag or stick in a little, a little like pouch on your belt and you can just beep it, you know, write it down on a piece of paper or on your scope sheet and then take it back to the truck. Um, short of using your phone or an iPad, you can, uh, let's see if I can get a picture of this. You can get a stand and put your laptop on it, right? This is like a music stand that, that I have my laptop set on. It's what I used to do for, for uh, when I worked at Liberty Mutual, um, my manager talked to me and did, he's like, I'll, I'll, I'll have, you know, it's, it's a supplies, you know, we send you the printers and everything. I'll just send over a stand and you, you got to try it, man. You got to try it. Because I was like a pencil and paper guy. I take it out to the truck and write it up. He's like, just write it up in the room, right? And basically that meant you take your laptop on the laptop stand and you take it into the room, right? And with your laser and you open up Sketch and you say, all right, this is the, you know, the editing room, right? Or the whiteboard room, right? Whatever it's called and draw my little square on it take my laser measurements, make the, the room square into those dimensions, right? And then build my estimate right there. And as soon as I'm done with that, take some photos. And I would even like take the, the SD card out of my, my camera, stick them in my laptop, add those photos for that room, put the, the SD card back in my camera, and then pick this whole thing up and walk into the next room, close the door behind me and be done with this room. I've got the measurements, I've got the the, the diagram, I've got the, the estimate line items. I can be standing in the room looking at these things like the, that baseboard there, that crown molding, this acoustic ceiling, this whatever, and then take the pictures of all the things to back up what I'm saying in my estimate, and then I'm done, right? It's that part of the estimate's done. By the time I get back to the front of the house, back to the foyer after going through all the rest of the rooms that were damaged, the estimate's done, right? That's not a bad way to do things, um, but the iPad is, I, I think is, is even better yet than that. Yeah, Lorena, good question. Waiting for your FL uh, Florida fingerprinting cards to come in from Florida. Any chance of emergency license? Yes. That has been confirmed that they are handing out emergency licenses. And again, you don't go get that yourself. You don't have to go to a website and like, you know, fill out a form and apply for it. You just show up to the CAT site and you've already, they've, already, they've already given it to you. It's already, it's probably just, you won't, probably won't even get anything. They'll just say, you know, you're under a blanket license for pilot, right? So don't, I wouldn't worry about licensing at this point. You want your Florida license eventually. And it may be that the, the emergency license only lasts for 90 days. And then after that, you have to have your Florida license to, to stay in Florida and keep working. So I'd still try and get it, um, but it's not a priority right now. You'll have time later to finish doing all that stuff and you can kind of do it as you go. Yeah, you mentioned your post about having exact where ID isn't our ID. Just, yeah, you just use that same demo or just that same ID. Um, they will give you all the instructions that you need. If you go, if you work for State Farm, they're going to hand you a computer that's got everything all set up on it already. Uh, if you work for Allstate, if you work, go work for Pilot um, and if probably Alacrity, Crawford and the other major firms, you're going to go in and they're going to, part of the orientation is they're going to, they're going to take your laptop from you, maybe even for the day uh, or at least half a day or whatever, and say, 
drop your laptop off up, off up here, drop your laptop off here, and then come pick it up by the end of, you know, by after two o'clock or whatever it is, right? And then they, they're going to get into your computer. They may ask you for passwords and stuff to get into stuff, and they're going to set up Xactimate for you, and they're going to set up if they have some sort of weird invoice thing or if they need to get, you know, whatever it is, they're going to set your computer up. This is the other reason why your PC laptop for work needs to only have this stuff on it. Don't have, you know, a bunch of games on it or, you know, if you if you use it to watch movies, it's just get that stuff off of there. Watch that stuff on your phone. Get an iPad um, or a different computer, a Mac, you know, if you want to use a Mac for like your personal stuff and just ha you keep your PC laptop just for work, right? Because you're going to, may have situations where you're, you know, handing this thing off to somebody and they're going to mess with it, right? Um, so don't have like, you know, crazy wallpapers and all that kind of stuff on your computer. And as far as your exact where ID goes, um, if it's not with State Farm, they will not do that for the iPad, uh, Manny. Um, if you're not going with State Farm, they may, if, if, if they have to, if you have to create a different um, exact where ID, then you just create a different one. It's not a big deal. Um, I doubt that they will. It should be it should be the same as your demo. Um, Storms developing after Milton. You know, we could take a quick look at that. I got about five minutes left here before I got to really got to jump. So if we go to NHC or hurricanes.gov, Leslie is not going anywhere. Interesting. Um, I don't know what that's about. I think that's just tropical disturbance that Milton's going to run into. The seven day uh, on the NHC. So if you go back, if you go to nhc.no or hurricanes.gov and you go down here to this link, um, I'm going to click on that and that shows you kind of what they, they think the next seven days is going to look like. Um, they've got some possible formation off the coast of Africa in the next week or so. Uh, Leslie's going to be going off into the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, Milton will kind of remains to be seen what it's going to, this storm is going to do after it passes over Florida, but it looks like it may get blown kind of back out into the Atlantic and not hook back around into the Carolinas or whatever. Um, Cause I think that a lot of what's kind of interesting about this storm is that there's a, the jet stream is really low down there, kind of going over the Northern part of Florida and so that's why it's kind of doing what it's doing. But um, hard to say at this point, might be nothing. Or this might be it. The doors to fast track deployment are still open and we still have some seats left. It's the one thing that will make the biggest difference between you getting your butt kicked on your first hurricane deployment and crushing it and setting up your career for success. Go to adjustertv.com slash certify right now and get enrolled.